quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Never give up. Never surrender. Howdy folks and welcome back to Lazy Dog Typewriters where today what you see before you is something from out of this world, a Smith Corona Galaxy. Apache tan and cream. And the cream is a serendipitous development we'll say because it originally used to be probably pearly white but as the plastic has aged over time it has aged into a nice soft cream. We can almost say a flan and a cream combo, maybe meringue. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Tasty Treats, we're talking about a beautiful typewriter. This is a Model 6 body style and it came out, you would think, in the mid-60s, but in reality it came out in 1959. So while they were still producing the end of the Model 5 series, they innovated and came up with the Model 6 Smith Corona, which is what you see here. And the biggest uh, change, of course, is the fact that you have a sliding ribbon cover. You no longer lift up on the ribbon cover, it slides forward. And uh, the very eagle-eyed will wonder, well, what is this SCM? This is a Smith Corona, right? What's this M all about? Is it machine? No, and that's, that is Marchand. Marchand was an adding machine company, and back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, it probably seemed like a great complimentary product to add on uh, an adding machine company to another office product company named Smith Corona. So that's why we have the SCM, Smith Corona Marchand, this particular model is 1960, and that was the first year that they decided to go ahead and put in block letters the SCM um, logo uh, on the front of the ribbon cover. All right, so other than that interesting history and this beautiful Apache tan color, which is reminiscent of the desert southwest for me, one of the number one distinguishing characteristics of this machine is the fact that it only has two colors on the ribbon color selector switch. Normally you would have a red somewhere over on this area, but you don't. So you have a stencil, which is white, and then a black, uh, which is black, <laughs> but which could be any color, really, indicating that there's only two positions on this ribbon color selector, and that is because it is a script machine. And if you had a third position with a large typeface like this, you would have bicolored typing. And that is uh, not by design something that people tend to like, to have red and black characters both on the same uh, line. So that's why if you have a machine that only has one or two positions, it's going to be an unusual typeface. It's going to be script or italic or something uh, not quite in the ordinary. It is possible, however, to have a script machine that does have a bicolor ribbon a color selector switch, but I don't believe there was such a machine ever made for Smith Corona. And if you know different, I'd love to hear about it. But other manufacturers used a smaller typeface on their script, which enabled them to use a two-color ribbon uh, just perfectly fine. So red and black, blue and green, whatever you wanted to do, you could do. This machine has a dedicated number one, but by the time this rolled out in 1960, that wasn't necessarily a dead giveaway because lots of machines, almost all of them, had a dedicated number one key, plus and equals. So that's another uh, telltale of having a script machine on the earlier versions. But again, by the time you get into the 60s, that doesn't help you so much. All right, continuing on around, since we're talking about the keyboard, uh, we have here our ribbon color selector we've already talked about. We have our tabs. We have a CL for clear and set. It's a differentiated button that is separated. It's on the side. You have this plastic key cover mask, uh, which can be removed. We have a plastic indicator here for L, M, and H, which is low, medium, and high. That is your tension selector. You have your carriage return, your platen return, your platen knobs, which are now uh, large plastic with still retaining the pull-out knob which was a Model 5 hallmark, the pull-out knob to release the tension. We have now migrated to the uh, love-hate relationship of the plastic carriage return levers. These are in great shape, but many times those will wear out and need to be replaced, and they're a little bit tricky to do. We have push to slide margin uh, tabs. These probably had a red stripe in them in the very beginning. I'm sure they did, but that is worn out with age. And we have our radio antenna. We'll lift that up for you to see. Our paper select, or excuse me, our paper support, 
uh, back there on the back, and we can see our ruler only goes up to, well, it goes up to 100. So it's interesting because what that indicates is that this is an elite typeface. It's 12 characters per inch, so it's 12 characters per inch, but script. And we'll show that to you in just a second. I know you're dying to see the script aspect of this machine. Coming on around, just finishing up, we have, again, our block letter, Smith Corona Marchand with the Smith Corona logo printed on the back in brushed aluminum. Uh, we have our slot, of course, which you can't quite see. That's, again, part of the new design. You have your slot to retain the machine inside of its case. And that's a quick run-up of just the basic machinery of this machine. Let's look at the carriage, uh, the uh, ribbon cover. It slides forward, as I noted. So if you haven't seen that mechanism, here we go. It's actually fairly elegant. It eliminates the problem of lifting up on the ribbon cover and having it bind in the corner. You sometimes see that or frequently see that on the Model 5s. It's only one of the, one of the few downfalls of the mine, mine, Model 5s. We also have a different, um, we have a different uh, paper bale. So we have just a straight bar. And what's interesting is this, this machine has lost its interior component, but there used to be a very thin metal rod with some very, very small hard plastic rollers. They're not even rubber anymore, but just hard plastic. And those facilitate the paper rolling underneath the paper bale. Interestingly enough, this machine that does not have that interior component does absolutely fine on keeping the paper compressed against the platen. So it's uh, nice to have. You don't really even need to have it to work. You have an eraser table right here. Uh, you have your line selector, one, two, and three. We still retain the number three positioning. That's for editing and your paper tension release on the right-hand side. We also still have a carriage centering device. So if you press this device in, this lever, uh, lift up on it rather, it will center your carriage and release the escapement. So that's really nice for shipping purposes. Because now look, oh my gosh, my typewriter is broken. It's completely disengaged. You need to move the carriage to engage it so you can then uh, type. So sometimes that uh, tricks up people when they get their brand new typewriters. And of course on the left we have our page gauge, which can be set, I'll zoom in a little for you, to help you uh, count down the amount of uh, paper you have remaining. And just to the left of that you have your uh, click release lever, which is the same function essentially as pulling this knob out to freewheel the platen. All right, let's take a second and we'll open up the hood and take out the look at those characters. Quick round fox jumps over the lazy dog. Never give up. Never surrender. Just take a look at that beautiful typeface. Just two samples of it for you now. That is artistic script number 75. It is a 12 character per inch typeface, so fairly compressed, which is why our ruler goes out to 100 essentially, even though it's only a 10 inch carriage. And it really makes me uh, happy to have it because these are just so pretty uh, and so complimentary to the idea of sending personal correspondence with a very distinctive, um, distinctive touch. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at that typeface. Also distinctive, like the typeface, is this case. This is your traditional Smith Corona, Smith Corona Marchand now, uh, case, except it's on an aluminum body made by Samsonite. It has a nice wide metal band. Here we can see the key helpfully taped in place by the previous owner. Um, but it also has kind of a tweed-like fiberglass outer coating. Um, and they're just really neat. Uh, the later ones had a different setup on the bottom, as Typer Minutes and others have noted, but this one, where they have four posts, but this one has a large metal piece, a frame, if you will, that uh, is just very simple and doesn't wear out and uh, it's very robust. You've got a lot of little hooks in here that keep the uh, two halves of the clamshell case together. So it's just a really nice shape. I don't know why they abandoned that. It might be a little bit cheaper to um, use the four post case. I don't know, but there were some efficiencies that Smith Corona came into. Let's see if we can get this case open on camera. There we go. All right. So we have your traditional. We no longer have the holiday case, so there's no internal bracket, uh, and you just have this locking mechanism in the rear and then on the front. And this one, interestingly enough, there are two little uh, rubber feet 
which are almost always on the later cases, well, they're almost always falling off, but they used to be put back here to keep the machine off of the rear of the case. But in this, this case, oddly enough, mine seemed to be intentionally and permanently affixed on the lower portion of the case to, I guess, elevate the typewriter so that it uh, fits more appropriately in there. We also have a slightly different locking mechanism here at the top. We have this big plastic piece which presses down on the um, key uh, cover of the typewriter. Uh, it's just a little bit different than the later variants of this case. So just small things to look at, but something to take a mind at when you look at the Smith Corona Galaxy because the Galaxy itself, after its run, was replaced by the silent, excuse me, the Super Sterling, which was also a Model 6, but which had uh, slight styling differences. And I, I kind of like the earlier Galaxies better, the 1959 through 65, roughly, machines, like the example that we have here. So let's go ahead and think about some pros and cons and give them to you. All right, so this is your Smith Corona Galaxy with an IE. We talked about it being Mario's typewriter. You may have thought Mario Puzo, but we think Super Mario <laughs> for uh, Super Mario's Galaxy. One of the pros is this is a very pretty design. It's a very elegant engineering design in terms of how the uh, ribbon cover slides forward. It's very easy to access. Same t uh, Smith Corona, wonderful typing touch. Um, very easy set and clearing of the tabs. Just an all-around nice machine. Very simple. The Galaxy series, if we listen to it, has a very strong bell. That's one thing I think they improved for sure over the Model 5, although they don't have a bad bell. But the Series 6 machines have a very resonant bell. Cons. Well, just because they've outlived their intended design span, these plastic carriage return levels on levers on many of these machines um, do break and have to be replaced. So that is definitely a known con. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of a scraping with this design. So there's just a little bit of hint of wear right here and right here. And many, many times, conscientious users, you will find, have put tape all along the edge of their typewriters, which of course has become petrified over time and they have to remove it. But they put tape here to prevent scraping uh, of the ribbon cover as it slides forward. And you can also see what I just did there. It's very easy to have your carriage out of position with this particular model and slide it forward and have the ribbon uh, carriage return lever uh, scratch your ribbon cover. So you'll often see scratches along the edge. You'll also see this is a plasticized it's a plastic, it's no longer metal, and sometimes these are bent down and you'll have scraping. So you have to try to figure out how to properly adjust these without breaking them off. And that is a, kind of a downside compared to the 5, which was all metal. So just a few cosmetic, well, major cosmetic differences. Still the same mechanism underneath the hood. A wonderful all-around machine and a fantastic overall typewriter that is definitely out of this world. Hopefully you enjoyed this review, and remember, never give up, never surrender. Never give up, never surrender. Please like, subscribe, and share.